Thoughts on girls in a sorority. Thoughts. <laughs> Thoughts on being in a sorority. <laughs> Thoughts. Thoughts of girls in a sorority. So I assume he's in a fraternity. And so typically in college, you got the fraternity and the sorority and you got a sister sorority type of thing where they have a dance and they get together. And it's a great, I mean, what college is great for, you know, there's, cause there's a lot of stuff that you see people making videos saying a college education is totally useless. And well, if you get a useless degree, that's always been true. I mean, I had, I, I went to um, a Catholic high school and it was a college prep school and I had friends that, that joined fraternities and went off to college and they had degrees that they wanted to, to major in and stuff. But because they fucked around so much in school and partied so much, they didn't have good enough grades. And then so they end up majoring in a degree like sociology. And unless you're going to be a sociologist, it's it's completely and absolutely useless degree. Like I had a, a friend of mine, he was a uh, he was a musician. He was actually pretty good. And he had a, a band up at University of Florida that was pretty well known at the time. This was like you know, early nineties when we were in college and, um, and he majored in sociology because he screwed around too much when he was a fraternity and plus, you know, being in his band. And then after he graduated, he, um, he went to work for one of the musical theater places. Mm -hmm. He worked there. He did kind of everything, you know, kind of helped run it. He was kind of the janitor at times, cleaning shit up after concerts and things. And I remember towards the uh, end of his life, he, he was in hospice care. And so he would help people that were, you know, people that were like terminally ill and stuff like that. And so he saw a lot, a lot of death. And I remember, um, this is like a sad story. Now I think about it, he just popped my mind, but it's, I don't even want, I don't even want to finish, but he, I want to hear it. <laughs> it's really bad. So this was this was like this guy was a really great dude. No, I, what I always remember about him is his smile. Mm -hmm. He was always happy. I would go to see him in Gainesville when we were in college, and I would stay with him at, at the frat house. And uh, and I can't remember what the I think Kyo. It, it was a sig up fraternity, and it was Kyo. I think at the time was like the sister sorority. And so when I would go up there, it was all like. Um, it was a party it would be at the frat house and all the girls would come over. The sorority girls would come over and a lot of them are cute and hot and everybody's hooking up with everybody kind of type of thing. It's, you know, my, my buddy ends up getting into a relationship um, with a girl that was part of this. So it's really good for your social life, you know, back to the original question we were talking about. And then I'll get to the really sad mm -hmm. ending of what happened with my, my friend, but it can be a great thing. For and it was great for him and his social life, and plus he would he would play concerts at at you know at his fraternity with him and his band. Yeah. And um, and so like I know like me personally when I went to college going to FIU, I made a lot of connections there. I met um, the CEO's son of the company I went to work for. He, we were classmates and we were friends. We used to hang out and drink. And um, the guy that was the marketing manager was also one of my marketing. Uh, professors at school um, another guy that handled all the scheduling taught you know the class I took on construction scheduling and so when I graduated and I was about to go decide where I wanted to work it's like I knew the CEO's son I knew the d director of marketing and I knew the scheduling manager from like one of the largest firms in the country that did commercial work and type of stuff that I wanted to do and so those friendships that I made just going to school between getting to know my professors and getting to know my my friend, mm -hmm. it's like it was pretty easy for me to get a job because of those social connections. And so that's yeah. that's the other benefit of you know going to college is the social connections and the fun that you have. And obviously, you can have a lot of fun with, with girls too, especially if you join a fraternity. Mm -hmm. And because they do a lot of those kind of mixer type things to get yeah. the guys and the girls together, because you get a bunch of single attractive people together it's chemistry is going to happen mm -hmm. relationships happen marriages come out of that hookups obviously come out of that and so it's a good thing but you know with the the joke when well, i'll probably was um because <laughs> jennifer was a, she was kayo as well and, really and uh sorority, but she was at florida state mm -hmm. and so the joke was even back then this is like you know late 80s early 90s kayo kayo it's off to bed we go Oh my god! Not, it was Kai O, but it was like Kai Ho. Oh yeah. So, 
you know, it's like you see a lot of the red pill stuff that dudes are very angry about, you know, women's body count and how much women have sex. And I was like, mm-hmm. I went to Catholic high school and these are supposed to be the, the best, best, most religious, prim and proper girls society going to like the wealthiest families, most successful families in, in Fort Lauderdale. And the thing I realized is like none of that shit mattered. Some of those girls were good and fairly innocent but for the most part it's, it's they all slept around like it's like none of that seems to be different to me because there's like there was a lot of sex happening and it's like 20 percent of the dudes in high school were sleeping with 80 percent of the girls that was going on back then and then what you see today with the dating apps is that most of the guys are getting no matches and having no sex and so you got like 20 percent of the dudes sleeping with 80 percent of the women and it's like basically the alphas are are cleaning up they were cleaning up when I was in high school. It's yeah. like, even though I went to a Catholic high school, it's like, and these girls are supposed to be good, you know, religious girls. It's, man, there was, girls were getting banged by multiple dudes at the same time. Oh my God. And these are girls I went to school with. And it's like They rebel out. And so when I hear all these dudes on the, the Red Pill stuff crying about, you know, women and their sexuality and how things have, modern women have changed, and it's like, it's more open. People learn, hear about these things. But I remember growing up, it's like we're, human beings are sexual beings. Mm-hmm. And if she's pretty, it's like she's going to have a lot of attention. And it really depends on character, mm-hmm. character's destiny. It didn't mean every single hot girl I went to school with slept around. A lot of them did, which is surprising, even when they came from super wealthy families, the names of which I could mention. And you were like, ooh. But I'm not obviously not going to. So I don't really see that it's changed much. The only thing that's different is social media has made it to where people are aware of it. People are aware that pretty girls tend to have a lot of sex, a lot more than most guys think. And I would say on average, even back back then in the 80s, what I saw is that most of the time girls, even girls that settle down by the time they're in their mid-20s, they all, they all have been with at least 20 or 30 dudes. That's insane. It's like, well, you think about it. I mean, I, even in high school, because what would typically happen is a girl would be dating. Like on an average school year, she might have three, maybe four different boyfriends mm-hmm. that she may have dated each one for two or three months. And it's like, so that's that's four dudes in, in one year she slept with. And there may have been a one night stand or a hookup at a party or something that might have happened in between yeah. a boyfriend. And so it's to me, it's like I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't a big deal to me. We didn't sit around counting body counts back then. It was like, oh, you slept with her. You slept. Yeah. It was like no big deal. It was happening. It was pretty common knowledge, and it's it was pretty pretty common that you think about that if a girl starts dating having boyfriends and becomes sexually active when she's 15 16 which is what typically most girls back then would lose their virginity and i think it's kind of around the same for the most part today is that by the time they graduate high school they could easily slept with 15 20 dudes everything i don't know that was pretty common back then and again i went to a catholic high school and but there were girls that had one boyfriend. They started dating sophomore year, and that was the only person they dated, and they got married and they lived happily ever after. And I can count on one hand the number of people that when I went to high school with that were like that. Mm-hmm. But like I said, it's I would say the average woman, it's like it was sleeping with these 20 or 30 dudes before they got married, and that was happening back then. And so for guys to say, like, oh, it's the social media has ruined them all and they're all a bunch of whores. And I was like, no, girls have pretty much always been whores. It's just most dudes never knew about it. When the I guys was... that get angriest are the dudes that aren't sleeping with any of the hot girls. When I was in high school, it was actually frowned upon. Like, people were actually, like, you would get judged if you were sleeping around. If you weren't a virgin in high school, like, you were looked at as, like, a slut basically so i'm actually surprised that i mean not that bad where did you go to high school at i went to piper piper and a school in new york piper high i remember we played them in high school Mm -hmm. and i just know that no one like if if you if you even heard that someone slept with someone we're like we would be so surprised like oh my gosh like 
what? Like, that's illegal. What? We're too young. But then right after I graduated high school, everyone was doing it. Like, it was like free spirit. Everybody did it. And if you did it, you were super cool about it. Yeah, I just remember it was, um, I had two of my friends and they both played football. One of them is banging one of the girls doggy style while she's giving a blow job to the, you know, his other friend. And it's like, and then the very next week she's sleeping with another friend of mine. And he didn't know that that had happened the week before. It's like, that's, that's three dudes in a week. Yeah. You know, like this is in the eighties. Coach, you don't understand. It's so different. I was like, really? You sure about that? I mean, you, you look back in like the sixties and free love and all that stuff, especially when the pill came along. It's like girls would hitchhike across the country and just sleep with random dudes that, you know, as gr a gratitude for the ride and have a great time. It was like, Ew. there was a lot of people who were having sex with a lot of different people. Obviously, diseases are getting passed around because it was, you know, a lot of unprotected sex just because of the pill. Isn't the sex rate low now? Like, not that many people are having sex now? Yeah, when you, you look at it. Um, well, the other thing to keep in mind is 74% of all Americans are overweight or obese. But the, the curve that's really bad is the guys that are from, like, um, 0 to 30. The amount, the percentage of men that are, like, 0 to 30 that have had sex in the last year, it's something like only 20 or 30% of them. But the girls are a lot higher. Like, you know, the... They're not having as much sex as they were like 30 years ago, but it's not really that far off. And so I look at that and I go, What's girls at? Chad, Chad Thundercock is busy. What's the percentage of women? I don't remember. Oh. But like when I looked at the, the curves, it's less than it was, but it's still pretty high. Hmm. And so you just, I just look at that and I go, This is what I saw growing up. This is what I saw in my 20s, my 30s. It's. And these guys that are on the internet, it makes such a big deal. Like anytime we do a video and we talk about body count, it's like these guys go bananas over it. But the reality is, is a lot of people are having sex. And if you look who's actually having sex now, it's about 20% of the dudes are fucking 80% of the women. And most of the women are having sex. Not as many, not as high a percentage as was like 30 years ago, but it's still pretty high. Mm. And like I said, all the anger and the, the hostility and the nasty comments about the body count stuff is coming from the dudes that aren't getting any because they're the ones that are the most pissed off. Because if they were getting laid left and right, they wouldn't care. They'd be bragging about it. They wouldn't, yeah. Get they'd be bragging it. about it and they wouldn't care. But the dudes that are just sitting there going body count this and that and virgin this and that, like, nah, shit doesn't matter. Just because you marry a virgin, virgin doesn't mean that she won't fuck your best friend when you're not around. Character's destiny, that's the only thing that really matters.